What's going on YouTube? We're going to look at cars and trucks today. And, uh, well, <laughs> we found some cool ones. Did I see Auto World this week or last week? I saw it on the pegs finally. Uh, unfortunately, from what I found, it looks like I might have missed a couple of releases that hit the pegs. Either they never hit, which could be the case. Or maybe they were, someone took them up. But usually you'll see remnants. There's always a couple of peg warmer auto worlds even though they don't last like other brands but they'll last there for a little bit so you'll see at least maybe one or two of the set this time i was lucky i found all the cars i wanted and we're going to take a look at those but first let's take a look at this little m2 machines <laughs> so let's get this set up real quick we found this one so that's a Ram Charger lowered. This is release 74. This is a wide release. It's not a Walmart exclusive. This will be one of 9250 or 9200. Another one to add to the Ram Charger set that I have. You know, in all different brands, typically I got Hot Wheels, Ram Chargers, and M2 right now. We'll see if the other brands jump in. I think Greenlight has something like a Ram Charger car, but I haven't seen it. Mostly Auto World. I rearranged the garage, so I got a little bit more cars in there. I'm trying to keep to the... And it's dirty in there, so don't look at the floor. So I was getting some, some. I, I really like housing the uh, Hot Wheels 100% cars in there. Let's take a look at the vehicle. Now I had to tune this up. This was kind of, it's still kind of messed up. I've been through, well, I, I saw in person, in the box, probably three or four of these. They all have the issue where the bed is misaligned and the... Well, you can see the tampo doesn't kind of flow very nicely. But it is pearl white paint. And we have the turbine wheels. You know, the l larger size, these would probably scale out to like a, over a 20 inch. They'll probably be like 24. Looks in something like a 22 to a 24 inch wheel in there. Black interior. This is a 72 Dodge, so we have the early front end grill. This is right after the swept line trucks of the 60s and early 70s the grill on this truck had the black outline in it i just painted it silver for now because they, i think they have a black wash of these grill in real life but the where they had the stripe it wasn't looking good so we're just going to take a look at it as is now it does have a custom motor so we'll take a look real quick it's got the hemi um with the supercharger so something out of like a hellcat demon something like that it's got the um valley supercharger so the supercharger intercooler setup is on top and i believe if i remember correctly the way these work is the blower is here and then under directly underneath it's the air charge intercooler and then it feeds into the to the heads although could be wrong. I think the Valley Supercharger and then it goes through the intercooler up the front. Yeah, that's probably how it is. Someone who knows these engines tell me, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, Valley Supercharger, belt driven, and then, um, yeah, the intercooler's in the front. So, this truck would have had plenty of space to do something like that. And there has been done like that in the past. Now, Really what I did was I take the tires off the rims, take the flashing off the tires, make sure that the wheels are straight on the axles, and then I give it some back spacing because the so standard spacing in this vehicle is off real bad. This this is the wider tire in the rear, but it's still not as wide as the clearance they give it here. So you, you could see I had to put quite a bit of tube to fill it out. I like to kind of dry run this and get it close, and then I'll fine tune it. There's really no set, I can't tell you a set, like if you have a chassis pan like this, I can't tell you a set um, measurement here because 
unfortunately each chassis even though it's the same they're going to be slightly different and what I concentrate on is getting a workable gap between this rim and tire and then the body some bodies have a thicker casting some are thinner like this more modern Dodge I mean this only came out pretty much this year so I tried to maximize the offset where it was tucked and I got it really close but this curve right here where the pen is it's touching the tire because there is a little bit of play so you want to have a smooth rolling vehicle or as smooth as you can so that's about as far as I can get that tire against there without it rubbing same with the front so a little bit of a trial and error process with that it's not hard um, again for those who want to know this is what I've ended up using this stuff's great and uh, I actually get a smaller I started with a thicker one but for these cars I like the thinner one you can go with a thicker style tube but this one is much more low profile and it fits on the the axle better so and I take the car apart you gotta take the chassis out to do this properly but after everything's done and said and you get the offset on there now when you look at the car and you spin it around and namely when we're looking down this profile view here we can tell that we have a more realistic stance and that's my goal alright next you know, a car like that. If you get the right tuner on this vehicle, you're probably pushing 600 horsepower reliably. I wouldn't want to do a 7, 800 horse truck really um, for something like that. So six would be good. 650, uh, six six speed auto would be my preference. Although you know you could do the eight and ten speeds, but and and, and for that, or we can do a six speed manual, which would be another choice of mine. Okay. Let's look at another vehicle set. Now, this is something uh, I saw a couple of times, and I decided to pass. But this time, when I saw it one last time, I knew it was probably going to be the last time to see it in the store before, you know, if I had second thoughts later on down the road, then I'd be stuck getting it from a reseller. So, And that's fine. You know, a lot of those people are doing good. They have normal prices, but, you know, these do get rare. M2s, they still list the production sequence and number of these, so we know how much are out there. Uh, Auto World has kind of stopped doing that. Green Light, we never knew. They serialize the cars, but we don't know exactly how much they make. But M2, it's kind of why you hit or miss. So if they're duds, they're duds. But this is the bright green chevy trucks uh the 71 d10 four-wheel drive and the 76 scottsdale step side so i'm going to show you this package now because i'm going to basically i'm going to take the chevy trucks emblem and put it probably on the buildings because i love the vintage 70s late 60s with the nuts and bolts and all that i think it's awesome so we're going to get that off the other thing which was a surprise on this because i never really looked at the back was this old school advertising where you see the overhead valve v8 awesome and by this time high energy spark ignition she had hei you had well at least by 76 i'm pretty sure you know we got rid of the points uh, sealed batteries things like that so lock up transmissions torque converters were coming i think they were available but yeah, I mean, you know, they were doing stuff that we wanted in the 80s and 90s, and they were starting to do it in the 70s. So let's take a look at the castings, and uh, I'm a fan of this box. Very messy with the screws, very loud. All right, so I'm going to bring out the full regalia. She's coming, she's coming, just be patient. So what a cool setup and it was kind of intense for me the first time i saw it but this green this highlighter green is really cool and i ride motorcycles as well so that's awesome i don't really do a lot of dirt riding but i have but it's still a cool setup well we got the toolbox with the with the maintenance set on there we got the blacked out trailer we have a matching 76 scottsdale trim step side and then we got the old four-wheel drive conversion on the g10 so shorty 
blacked out trim it's got the lake pipes on there on the side <laughs> really really thin lake pipes but they're nonetheless those are going to get removed and we don't really need those for me but i wanted to show you everybody how this vehicle looks out of the package it rubs on the tire right there so another non-functional it's not bad but this actually and that and maybe that's why i was able to get this late in the day it was kind of still there um this was off but they really i like that so usually how these factory assembles these is they go ahead and take these pins and they'll push it through the van and then they'll take up you know like a hot iron or something whatever a tool and it melts that and they don't even use glue which is great i mean because the pins are usually a bit longer than they need to be so they'll go ahead and put that on and then melt it from the inside and it does a great job you know especially if you're just doing these real quick and then we have the optional um ladder we got the rear facing light so when you open the doors and it's nighttime you can shine back there we got an actual real wheel up there rubber tire so that's kind of cool i got a spare wheel did not fill this in with the white but someone that suggested that last time it does look good so oh wait not this one <laughs> here's another one I, this one i showed on instagram but uh yeah so you can see i'll do that to this just uh be patient anyway you can see here's a nice little stock van that i did put the white wheels on it you know these they do a good job on these wheels you just have to detail them a little bit because back then they had the black in there looks a little crappy on the magnification but you know when you're looking at it like this it looks good so anyway i like the vans what can i say they're cool so let's look underneath we've did this on the comp cams lifted truck but here you do here you get a little representation of this one they give lots of room for customization for wheel and tire options you can see the gap in there is enormous so plenty of uh, fun you can do I don't know if I'm 100% sold on this backspacing. It's good. It's pretty close to where it needs to be on these fat tires, but might need to adjust it if I change them. So I do like this. It almost calls for having some fender flares, but it looks cool. This is so cool. Set. Excuse me. It's an awesome setup. All right, so there's the van. I'm, I'm sure... So I usually have a good gut feeling about certain cars, about what's going to be popular down the road and and kind of gain steam and what what's just going to be whatever. And this probably would be one of the classic sets. So this is really neat too. I mean, this wouldn't be my first choice for a custom, but I do appreciate the, it's very like uh, uniform. So they got the blacked out trim. It's all blacked out. And, and I like that when the manufacturers do these, when they do the solid color flat trim and it's a piece of plastic like this, you actually get to see how nice the moldings are without having chrome or paint on them. This is like the bare molding. And you get to see how nice these castings are. You can see the bolt holes or the, the top of the, the bolts, those fender uh, bolts. Are those bumper bolts all awesome stuff you get a good look for that lime green Scottsdale this has the black dot rallies again the wheels just the bare casting without any paint or anything at it so you can see how crisp and detailed they are and you can see how much the chrome plating and things like that and paint obscure some of that detail same thing with the grill Let's see if we can get it to kind of focus a little bit so just cool stuff let's see if they're running any big motors in these they're probably just running the 350s yeah there's that no opening features on the van and of course we got the old school trailer with the chocks let me just put her old there it actually fits the trucks good some of the cars it's a little a little bad on so looks good wheels a little small the best trailer I have right now is my Auto Roll Johnny Lightning trailer. Um, in the collection, I did green light uh, wheels and tires because they make really good, accurate trailer wheels and tires. 
but this one's pretty good so this is what I have so far it even has the working landing gear so you can see so I like this and then the ramps store down there they're, they're metal too so this is actually a nice setup I do like that this one is kinda like trying but uh, it's not the best but it makes a good display I really want to mess with this truck, but I really think it's cool as is. It'll probably be like the square body trucks. You should probably just leave them alone. <laughs> and I do like it. So we'll just leave this one. Even though it's hard for me not to mess with stuff. And the uh, the van rolls good. So I didn't even really have to screw with the van. It's funny, the green light, or not green light, uh, M2 does the t these tires really well. Works. They work really well. And they're very soft, so... All right, <laughs> let's move on. We don't have too many cars to look at, so I kind of indulge in a little bit of extra information on these things. That's cool. Let's get into Auto World now. So, a favorite, a favorite of mine in this channel. Let's look at some existing stuff, and then we'll get right to the two new castings for the set. So, it just already went to 2024 release one, where I missed this one. And that's the firebird if you already caught that but so this set I, I haven't seen no hide no hair of this set really i might have saw the fa uh the fair lane or the galaxy but you know i'm really looking forward to getting the celicas and the wagons obviously and probably the ram trucks just because they're cool i mean i'm not a huge fan of them but they're nice castings and i like pickups so I mean, really, I really need all of them because I do get the the Mach One cars, and I don't collect the three thousands, but I'll probably have those too. So anyway, I just love them; just good product. So here is a Royal Bobcat dealership Firebird, and Royal Bobcat. That's you know, back then the dealers made some money, and they still dealers still do this to this day. They just don't do it in as high volume as they used to, but they take the car. That they order for the dealership. And then they put whatever aftermarket it was around. So today the big thing is the Jeeps and the pickup trucks. They'll get lift kits and tires and, you know, LED lighting kits and, you know, whatever. Step bars. And you can make a good profit. So, you know, you sell a car that a customer is already going to customize. And you kind of put a quote-unquote dealer package on it. And there you go. You got a marked up dealer package that you paid a guy you know, outfitter around town to, to do some work for you. And you can pay the car and it still has the warranty and all that. So this is the gold one. The other one on this set, the because I found the version B's of everything. I'd really like to find A. Hopefully soon. Again, it's random what case they put out first. This is to my experience. So this has some information there. You can read. And... A lot of times, these cars, they put the wheels on it to maybe, you know, get a special color. Um, obviously, it's going to be transmission, rear end, and engine upgrades. A lot of time brakes. Automatic and stick shift was still popular back then, almost equally. Maybe a little bit more heavy on the stick shift. But automatic cars, if you built them right, they'd be pretty fast and consistent when you race them. So, it's probably gaining popularity. But still probably more stick shift in the 60s, 70s. Now it's more automatic, but there's some stick. But mostly auto. Or manual autos. You know, if you want to split hairs, but you're not really using a clutch. Uh, this car it's probably has... Let's see what, if there's a call out. It's probably the 400. Yep. So you got your 400 Pontiac and then... We have that beautiful 69 front end and your beautiful Pontiac blue engine block. And this is still when General Motors, the blocks were, you know, division specific. So Olds, Pontiac, Cadillac, Chevrolet, they all had kind of had their own sh stuff going on. This has the chrome rallies. You got a Pontiac badge back there. You got your Royal um, Pontiac plate. And uh, your door emblem. 
Autoroll does the nice insert here. So a lot of times they'll have tooling expense for a piece like a spoiler or a front end. Piece of plastic, you know, whatever damn. But this time they spent the money for the side. And uh, that can be changed depending on the, the trim level of this vehicle. Uh, Ram Air hood. So this car had Ram Air in it. And then you can see they called out the uh, weather stripping that goes between the bumper and the sheet metal. So, really the last of cars designed this way. There's really nothing here. You know, when you get into a crash, that whole thing goes away. And then they started going to cars that needed bumpers. <laughs> the, not so much bumper back then. But the cars, that's why everybody loves the cars. Because it was really the last time designers almost had free reign. Uh, before they were, you know, regulations really played a big part in what a car looked like. So this is kind of last hurrah for that. You know, it was coming on strong in the 50s uh, and 60s, but, but then in the 70s it really got serious where they made some pretty big drastic changes to federal regulation. All right, so here's the car here. You know, this car probably about 300 horse, 350 horse car. You, know, you get up to 400, but reliably, you know, you don't want to go too crazy. You know, these cars are solid lifter cars or you had gas back then you had to kind of worry about sometimes you know did have lighter gas so i helped with that nation but yeah still you probably want to get more displacement out of that a lot of guys would take the engine out and stroke them anyway <laughs> all right now we're going to look at uh this one that's going to stay in the package because uh, who knows how many more of these i'll find hopefully i find another one so this is going to be a really popular casting. Um, this is the Color Squatch Dodge, which is an homage to a car I'm going to show you here in a minute. So this is kind of like, and you can probably read, you know, there's a paint chip car back then. But I also have the original one that they did in Auto World back in the day. And I still got this old girl, so we're going to look at it here in package. So this will be a good... Um, this will be a really good matchup here in a minute. So there's a good look at it. it got all the colors. It's supposed to be 14 colors, I think it says. So awesome stuff. This is a really cool... This is almost like... I just got to keep it in the package. Here's the OG. So there's my OG. So I, I haven't parted with this yet or taken it out of the box. Never found another one. I only made 25 of these. 2500 so this is back from 2017 2018 i don't know if they made i thought they made two colors this is this is release three ver, version one or i don't know if they had the a and b series yet i can't remember i'm not i'm not an encyclopedia quite on the early days of these guys but look at the old a few years ago what they were doing and now current day see the difference and this is all pretty cool so there we go got a couple I got an oldie and a goodie so we've looked at this casting before so if you're curious about this casting it's been around for a minute check the previous videos enjoy all right those will go somewhere in my good good car bin. All right. So first one here we're going to look at that's new for this time is going to be this old 1990 Eclipse GSX in black. And so, again, I found the version Bs of all these. So this is the Top Dog Eclipse. This is the Colt Eclipse that everybody falls in love with. Now, are you going to see these cars a lot? No. This is still back in the days. I mean, today you won't see these cars too much, but back in the day they were the car. Joint venture between Chrysler Corporation and Mitsubishi. These cars were made in the States, and they were actually exported back to Japan and Europe. Uh, 89, late 89, first year. I don't know if they were badge 89s, but really this car is a 90. I'm, I'm assuming it was, a, it was a 1990 car sold in 89. I don't know exactly, but first generation car, pre facelift. They had a facelift on this car, um, 94, 93. 
And then this generation, you know, this platform was up until 94. And then we had the really famous, I, I like that, that, that style of clips from, from 95 to, to 99. And then we had that really goofy Pontiac looking one. And then we had the last generation one, which kind of looked back to the cars that looked like in the 90s. And the last Eclipse was made in 2011. So, sort of brief, but uh, very impactful on the on the import scene, even though these are really domestic imports. They badged them, the DSM, which was Diamond Star Motors. That was that joint venture, you know. And this is back when Chrysler was still Chrysler. Uh, and Chrysler is kind of trying to rebuild itself, you know. 89, 90, we had some cool stuff happen. They bought... AMC Jeep, so we got the Jeep into the fold, and then in 90, 91, 92, we had the Dodge Viper, you know, come out and all that, so they were trying. This is Auto World's first wheels that they produce, so this is kind of a cool wheel. I'm assuming we'll probably find more of these on the pegs myself, so maybe these wheels will go to different cars. I think it's a really cool wheel. Really soft rubber really vinyl is what you'd really call it very stretchy so they've made this tire before on other products but uh very stretchy material this time they did this graphite gray interior but it's like more silverish so i know what they're trying to do but a little weird let's see if we can get the hood open i haven't tried we're gonna have to get the blade there it goes so all these cars, even with the rear all-wheel drive setup, are still transverse mounted. So you'd have the engine here, and then the transmission here. And lots of different engines. In the early days, you had a 1.8 liter as a base, which you couldn't get with all-wheel drive. It's front wheel. 90 horse, then a 2 liters. So they had a 1.8 liter single cam. Then they had a 2 liter twin cam, non-turbo, about 130 horse, 140 and then you had two turbos, and you had the turbo with well, front wheel drive, and you had the turbo like this car, so you had a GS and then the GSX. This car is GSX. GSX all-wheel drive. So to think about that. You had this little car that they did all-wheel drive on back then, and it you know wasn't a huge thing. People, you were like, well, I'll just get rear-wheel drive or you know, front wheel is fine. Not a lot of people are demanding the all-wheel drive yet. They're kind of setting that trend. Um, they had the 3000 GT and the Dodge Stealth all-wheel drive, so they're kind of kind of bringing that down market to these cars. So it's kind of a unique offering. So we had a close 200 horse with the stick shift because you had a five-speed manual. You had an automatic. It was an option. Uh, a little bit more power out of the motor when you had the stick because back then the uh, automatics, you know, in that front-wheel drive configuration – couldn't really build them too crazy strong at least from the factory and be you know cost competitive so they were able to put a little bit more bigger injector on i believe that's how they did it that's what i read anyway i can't remember i used to know these cars a little bit better but uh back in the day when they were more relevant but uh all-wheel drive car um stick shift you know turbo so and then you could build it up a lot of people would take the mitsubishi engine and, and do a lot of work to it so you could see the chassis they did mold the all-wheel drive system we have our drive shafts rear end independent rear and then we have our exhaust so it's all there it's all there they did a great job. So we're also going to see, you know, you got the Eagle Talon and the Plymouth Laser. We're all built on this platform. So all the divisions, or most of the divisions, were able to get a sports car out of this. Handsome vehicle. Nothing wrong with that. Looked good back then, you know. But lower production than the rest of the cars. And then it just rusted away. You know, I'm sure a lot of people didn't know about turbos as well. They showed up and they probably... Probably ran the turbos bad and all that, or they got chopped up. All these cars got raced up and all that, but it's cool to see it again. You know, this wheel, <laughs> it's not really stock wheel. They're not, they don't look quite like this, but I really like the choice. So it's a really good dished wheel. So I'm glad to have this. And it's a great relic of the old days. And it doesn't even seem like that long ago, but these were it. 
and then hopefully they'll they'll tool up the other cars they'll from the other divisions like the Plymouths and stuff and then do the facelift and have all of them so a lot of these type of cars that auto world's doing kind of interesting all right let's move on to the last and final and i saw this on peg and i was real excited no one uh picked it up I guess the popular one was the tricolor, you know, the 14 color Challenger and, and you know, the Silverado, or the, not the Silverado, but the Ford Lariat, the F-150. I did not get that, but I will, or probably will, because it's a kind of an interesting cherry red. Um, so here we go, Cat Eye Truck, and they even referenced the Cat Eye. When this truck came out, I really didn't like it. I actually liked the previous, the 2002 body. You know, if you were going to do this series truck. Now, this one went all the way to the redesign in 07. So, from 03 to 06, basically, this truck was out with the funky. And and when, during these years, I loved the chassis and the way they drove. Didn't like the Chevy, but if you like didn't like this body style, you just get the GMC, the Sierra. Much better looking, in my opinion. Although, in scale, I kind of like it. So, here we go. This is the green. I think the other version A vehicle is going to be the, the gold or the tan. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <clears throat> it's got these wheels I think they use on the uh, Silverados. So like the 2020 Silverados that they have, the 21s. Same rim, but it looks like the old, old style wheel too. It's got the black fender fares, but they're not... <clears throat> they didn't mold the fenders. They just painted them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it off. I'd rather, <clears throat> rather have this the regular fender. And it's not a Z71. So it's a 4x4. So it really doesn't need the fender flares on it. So I'm going to take those off. But I wanted to show everybody how it looks out of the box. Tan interior. Now they had a tan with the green. That was actually, I think, the combo that you would get with this. But... It's a little yellow for my taste. Needs to be a little bit more tanned up. The other thing I noticed, it's got the chrome style um, honeycomb, but most of the trucks on this trim will have black, so I'm going to probably put black in there. I do like the headlights. They look good. And then got that funky uh, <laughs> early 2000s Chevy gray plastic, so that's kind of cool. They got that down there. And this is the short wide, so we got a short bed truck. Got the right bumper on it. It's metal. Bumper is molded with the base, so I love that. You know, on the C10 trucks I did, that bumper is separate plastic, and they always are deformed. So this moves, but it's stiff, and I'd rather not work it so it gets loose. So we'll just leave it be. But they got the old Chevrolet back on there perfectly. That's exactly how it looks. And they got Texas tags. So a truck like this looks like an LT because it's got power window, power lock. It'll have the keyless entry. Um, <clears throat> has the alloys, you know, if these are actually the alloys. So this would have been like an LT. Probably had the 4.8. Most of the short beds, you know, you had to try to get the 5.3 back then. Um, so really it's probably a 4.3 a V8 or 4.8, 4.8 liter V8. They also had a 4.3 liter six cylinder still. And these are all Vortec engines. Four speed automatics. Uh, probably a bench seat with the console that flipped down. Yeah, there it is. And um, <clears throat> I'm just looking at it. I did like that they painted the steering wheel black because M2, when they do these interiors, everything's the same color. So it's nice that they had to do that. And I don't have to open the truck up. The only thing I did to this truck was I took the flashing off the tires. I had a little bit of flashing. And I put some spacers on to give it a little bit better back spacing. Um... I think it looks better. The four-wheel drive trucks, the front end on it, since it's an independent front end, or independent four-wheel drive that came out, you know, in the 88 trucks, uh, needs to be pushed out. So that's what I did. Back, not so much. I had the standard. Uh, these four-wheel drives, you had an option, because if it wasn't Z71, you had an option the rear end to be a locking or a limited slip. So this could have been an open diff. Here's our four-wheel drive chassis. So that's exactly the way it looks. So the four-wheel drives, they had these bigger A-arms like this. And then you had the skid plate. 
and they actually molded the correct uh, steel wheel under here with the holes. So good, good detail. Uh, I want more of these. I like them. They're cool. I really like this generation truck. They drive amazing, but I just prefer the GMC front end or the doghouse. But other than that, they're awesome because the 4.8 and the 5.3 of this generation, the Vortec and the 4-speed auto, uh, amazing trucks. They drive like Cadillacs. I just love them. I would like to get one. I miss having a pickup truck. So maybe hopefully we'll get one. You know, I don't even mind um, if it's an 8-footer. Uh, short bed's fine, too. Uh, I don't even need a four-wheel drive. I'd rather have a two-wheel drive, eight cylinder, and just slam it down. That's all we need to do. We looked at some nice vehicles today. Let's back up. So mostly trucks, right? Because <laughs> why not? We love the trucks around here. But we got some cool cars. And uh, more to come. I think I got some vintage Hot Wheels. Or people yelled at me last time I said vintage. But, you know, from the 90s, right? So at this point, yeah, it's getting up there. <laughs> so kind of bad card stuff, but interesting subject matter. So it'll be a short video, but something kind of walk down memory lane. And then maybe generate some people's nostalgia or comments below. Hope you enjoyed this one. It's a quick update, but I really like finding this. This is fun. I hope I get the other color. They roll really good. They got the good tires on them. Hopefully we get more cars soon. You know, we're going to find some more. But uh, for right now, we got this to look at. Hope everybody's been doing well and uh, enjoying themselves out there looking at cars and trucks. Uh, I won't ever stop. Love it too much. And I uh, love sharing with everybody. Hope everybody's doing well again. Thank you for the new subscriptions, the thumbs up, and the comments. That helps the channel. So the more of that, the better. Try to get answer questions if you have any. In each video, down below in the description, we got information about other avenues for MIGS models. We've added a link or the name to the eBay store. Um, so there'll be some surplus vehicles from the collection available for sale on eBay. So that's an announcement. If you haven't noticed last video, I kind of snuck it in the description. So it won't be a ton of vehicles, and maybe you won't only see maybe one or two. And sometimes, some days, I'll, I'll you know, put more up there. But, um, yeah, so first come, first serve with that kind of stuff, you know. Take a look down below for information there. Uh, more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Till next time.